Hang on one sec. It's already begun recording. We're no. already five seconds in. No. It's too late. I can't unchange it. This fucking no. program does not have a pause option. It's too late. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the wonderful world of protagonist swaps. Uh, today we'll be taking Bayonetta through the events of the main God of War game I know next to fucking nothing about Ghost of Sparta. <laughs> Yes, um, God, this one is going to be really weird to talk about, because unlike all the main games, at least the ones prior, we kind of had the justification of her just being, like, you know, shoot away on, like, a quest to, uh, be there, right? Um, and in the case of Ghost of Sparta, that doesn't really work. Because be well, be at square. the end of at the end of God of War One, basically Kratos starts getting visions of his past and things involving his mother and his brother, which wouldn't be relevant to Bayonetta because she doesn't know Deimos or Callisto. She's never met them, so she's not going to get the visions unless we say say she well actually no even if she was on the throne she wouldn't get the visions so we're just going to say for the sake of argument that uh because there is a prophecy in the game listed i don't know why the gods would suddenly feel compelled to do this but we'll just say for the sake of like convenience the gods are worried about a prophecy involving the mark warrior which is covered in this game anyway and they after the after her successful victory against ares they instruct Bayo to go there uh, to basically investigate a series of different uh, places that they think might have clues to this information uh, and the individuals who might have information related to this. Um, and for some reason, they came upon the realization that both Deimos and Kalistro were the individuals who did this. So they basically send Bayo a list of locations and they whisk her off to her location. Uh, problem is, is that when they sent her there on that boat, uh, they did not inform Poseidon. And Poseidon, being the royal asshole that he is, decides to send legions of soldiers to meet Bayonetta. Spoiler warning, it does not end well for them. Um, as with basically every protagonist swamp, we are basically putting her in Kratos' shoes. So she gets all of Kratos' like, basic interactable things and her his like, basic resistances and his like, tearing. Um, that's it. But then she also has like all of her own stuff. And technically, she has all of the knowledge of the three protagonist swaps. Because the characters do get knowledge of the verse... Or their encounters from previous protagonist swaps. Yes, they get their previous knowledge. They do not get just like generic knowledge. They only get what they what they would most likely have come to realize over the course of their journeys. Right. So she she will have a pretty intimate knowledge of most of the. Well, she'll know at this point that she's in a world that is definitely just Greek mythology come to life. Uh, she'll have recognized most individuals, and she'll have fought and had experience against most of the mythological creatures. Here, she's not really going to be dealing with any problems at the beginning of uh, Atlantis' arrival. Um, and this this covers from, like, I, I think the first level, all the Temple of Poseidon and the Caldera? I say the, the, Caldera. Cal the Caldera here, yes, which yeah. is... It's like the fourth uh, or fifth level. Uh, nothing too crazy here. Skyla is going to try and mess with her, but she'll just, like, zone Skyla to death because she can fly. And, well, that was kind of the reason that level dragged out really long was because Kratos had no airborne and zoning capabilities. He just fought her in a room, and then, like, Skyla would just, like, break off some wreckage in the wall, and then you would move past... But there's no reason for that level design to even exist when you have a character that can jump like hundreds to thousands of feet in the air and fly and zone from hundreds to thousands Mangler, of feet in the are, air. Are, are you saying that Kratos can't jump thousands of feet in the air, Mangler? I'm saying that like her archetype as a fighter the, the invalidates template? all <laughs> it invalidates like all enemies in this campaign that like th where their win con and their against Kratos consists of I'm gonna attack you in this room with like giant monster tentacles or something, and then and then hope it does something because you have to physically interact with me. And Bayonetta just shoots them to death because guns. 
Yes, because I think we ran. I think we kind of realized this. Uh, I think. I think it wasn't in Bayon- It wasn't in God of War One specifically. We realized it, it was in the others. Basically, uh, Bayonetta's entire kit invalidates a lot of the level design that caused Kratos' problems because she actually has something called mobility. It would. It would technically invalidate it even if we put her in there from a gameplay standpoint. It just had her gameplay features, like if we just gave her like. Um... You know, like, we gave her jump system, right? Like, like if we if we just put her in Ghost of Sparta with her actual mobility system in the game for what only the player had access to, she'd still invalidate the entire level design. All right. But, yeah. So, uh, I, I, again, I, I am, like, next to... No- I know next to nothing mainly about this particular game. So, how do, how do we get from wherever the fuck the Caldera is into the Volcano Core? Uh, so we we move along, right? We, we get there. Uh, I'm, I'm you, you don't know how we get there, do you? No, I'm trying to see if there's anything in these pages that's significant, but it just seems to be Cyclops. Oh and yes. Uh, for context, for those of you in the background who don't quite understand what Mangler's talking about, uh, Mangler has access to the uh, guidebook for this game because he has and, all and, the and every game. Duck. Yes. Yes. If so... you hear me turning pages, like all that sound. That is a guidebook. And if you hear clicking I'm... in the background, that is not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she'll uh, she'll approach Callistro, uh, find her, and basically ask her for information. And we'll just say that um, Callistro. Well, I guess Callistro doesn't transform into the monster here because uh, Callistro has no reason to tell anyone that uh, Zeus is Kratos' father. So, I guess she gets to live. Wait, wait, wait. That happened to this game? I could have sworn that was a cutscene in God of War 1. Uh, no. Well, well I think it is a cutscene. Yeah, like, it's like it's like after you beat the game, you unlock some hidden, like, cutscenes, and one of them... Oh, yeah, yeah. God of War 1 does preempt, like, a lot of things in Chains of Olympus, and Chains of Olympus, obviously, God of War 2, and Ghost to Sparta, and those ideas got set up later in the spinoffs, obviously. Uh, but, like, that's, um, that happens here because, like, Kratos is basically investigating the situation and he comes upon his mother. She tells him the truth, which technically retcons God of War 2 because he learns that at the end of God of War 2, Zeus is his father. But then he figures out here, like, decades before. I don't know. They didn't really think that one out. Mangler, you wouldn't be telling me that Kratos has bad memory or something, would you? No, I would just say the uh, the authors have bad writing. Okay. Don't you fucking lie to me. <laughs> uh, so then we get into the volcanic situation. Uh, well, actually, actually, no, no, that doesn't happen. Because Skyla is the one that drags you underwater into the subterranean volcanic counter. Uh, chamber, but Skyla's dead, so uh, we're skipping the entire lava section because there is no reason Bayonetta would ever go into the volcano. You sound if... incredibly happy at that for some reason. I'm not that happy. I'm just thinking how myself, bad like, the... was Volcano Core. It actually wasn't that bad of a level. Um, we got some useful stuff there, but it's like. The less, the less we have to maneuver that's, like, that I remember, the better... Actually, technically, I do remember the volcano a little bit better. And then it goes back into Kreat, which is basically some, like, um... It's essentially, like, a village hub area, respective to Atlantis, which is where he's located. Um... Yeah, no. Well, actually... Actually, she just navigates Kreat normally because Kreat is no longer on fire because, well, Bayonetta didn't go into the volcano to piss off Thera, who then erupted the volcano and then set Kreat on fire. So since that didn't happen, Kreat is not on fire. Um, yeah, no, I'm going to be honest. Like, a lot of these events are just not happening because certain characters are just dead or not dead for whatever reason. So are, are you telling me we basically get just a free pass here because similar to how Dante just immediately kills fucking what's his face and Bayonetta we're just gonna say something similar here 
Yeah, like, like kind of like when Dante kills Fortitude, uh, Vigrid doesn't get set on fire. Create doesn't get set on fire because the specific reason the volcano above Atlantis explodes and sets everything on fire is because Thera gets pissed off with the fact that Kratos tries to rip basically her power out of her chest. But that doesn't happen because Skyla never pulls Bayonetta into the volcano because Sky Skyla gets killed by Bayonetta at the beginning of the game. So... Yeah, we basically are just skipping the entire, like, uh, Caldera, the Volcano Core, the Island of Kree, and we're just going straight to, like, the Temple of Athena, where she'll just basically give, uh, just go straight for that, uh, she'll get, in, uh, information from, like, Athena that she needs to travel to, I guess, like, Sparta, to, to investigate the background of Deimos, um, and then find out more information about him. So, I guess she'll just go straight through the rest of these levels, fight a couple dogs, um, she runs to a Gorgon, but she knows what Gorgons are like, so she'll just, like, you know, run them to death. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else. Nothing but Cyclopses. There aren't really a lot of bosses in this game, I'm gonna be honest. Well, there is, like, a Wraith, but, like, intangible enemies don't mean anything to Bayonetta. The, the angels in Bayonetta are already, like, intangible, uh, intangible, uh, spirits. Uh, do like I, did, uh, wink? Wink? Am I hearing wink? Dude, we literally see it in Chelsea. Uh, can I, can I please have the source, please? Oh my god. Uh, listen, I'm just saying that these claims you're making are pretty um, absurd. <laughs> there is a guy named Gary, and he is not, like... A time manipulator he's literally like a golem that uses a giant electrical bulb to slam it into your face um yeah he's probably gonna die pretty quickly oh he's a giant yeah i forgot about that uh then she gets through the winter the winter mountain range which is supposed to be a uh a sort of a side uh a uh what's it called you know, a shortcut to uh, Sparta. Yes. And uh, this is not really going to be a problem for her. So initially this was a problem for Kratos in the main game because he doesn't seem to have a lot of, like, ice resistance. But these enemies aren't really going to be doing anything to Bayonetta at all. Not only does she have the weapons Kratos to deal with them, she has, she has the resistance to be able to handle being around enemies that can freeze her solid. Um, what else? Do, 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 do. Yeah, the Boreos enemies are not a problem. Uh, any of the areas where she could potentially be frozen, or she could go underwater, she could just, like, skip. Um, she'll probably make it to the bridge around the edge of the... I'll, I'll be honest, she's probably just gonna jump straight over the top of the mountain range and just head for Sparta, and she'll get intercepted by Arenas, which is the daughter of uh, Thanatos. Um, who's basically gonna... Not... What? <laughs> what in the world? I mean, I guess if you're into that thing... I, I, I've i never seen this... I've never seen this character before. Do you, do you know what she looks like? I do not know what she looks like. That's why I'm asking... Okay. That's why I'm asking you on her attractiveness, man. Sure. Sure, she's... Is she on... Now I feel like this is a girl on fire. What's her name again? I'm gonna look this up. She's not on fire, I assure you. She has, like, black wings, and she can summon the void. Uh, which... What's her name again? Arenas. E-R-I-N-Y-S. E-R-I-N-I-S? Oh, here, here we go. Okay. What the fuck is that thing? <laughs> the thing you wanted. <laughs> well... It still looks almost as good or better than Aphrodite, so... Oh my god. Go, c c c uh, continue Sage Master. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> Renus will just try to stop her, and a boss battle will ensue. And then they uh, proceeds to just remind everyone the God of War verse she, like, has the only consistent real-time manipulation. <laughs> yeah. But like, oh, you're manipulating the void. Hang on a minute. Which time... And, uh, the fight's over. Like, insanely fast. All's well, it ends well. 
So she beats up someone's daughter. Sounds in character. Then what happens? Then she arrives in Sparta, where basically every citizen is going to be uh, completely freaked out by her appearance. Um, she's probably just going to run straight to the temple of... Well, I mean, I guess she gets trapped in a... Well, uh, actually, no, she probably just skipped through it in Purgatory, for being completely honest. Yeah. So she probably wouldn't fight the the Pariah's lion. Um, the fuck is that? It's just this lion they keep in Sparta's cages that has the ability to, like, paralyze you with its roar. That seems oddly uh, dangerous. It is pretty dangerous, but, it, you know, it, it's not really going to be able to notice her if, you know, she's in another universe. Are you sure about that? You sure this is, you sure this is just some of your downplay? No. Um, I believe... Basically just head up to the, um, the Temple of Ares. Um, he's not going to interact with a, a random, like, piled version of Kratos here, because Kratos is not located in this area. Um, I guess she can pick up the arms of Sparta if she needs to, but she probably might not. I mean, maybe there's not really, like, a reason for her to pick it up. Uh, the Borealis... Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Bor Borealis is uh, basically one of the wind spirits. He's probably going to shoot... Uh, like, his winds on the the mountain do have the chance to, like, freeze you, but that's not really going to do anything, because Bayo can just jump around. Uh, or just produce, like, colder ice or heat. Like, she'll, she'll be fine. Like, she's not going to get frozen by that. I see. Um, then we'll just say that she makes her way towards the domain of death at this point. <laughs> she's essentially getting nowhere. I, I kind of wish you would have told me which which character in game we were going to do before we did this. That way I could have at least like googled a quick walkthrough or something. Trust, trust me, a lot of this makes more sense when it's Kratos. Because he has a reason to be in these locations. Whereas, like, Bayo's just gonna be wandering until she gets bored. So, are you and telling me this is... is... Oh. Like, I'll be honest, the only reason she's even gonna know where she's going is because she was given a direction, and, like, she'll hop in and out of Purgatory occasionally to avoid areas where she's just getting, like, bored. And Athena happens to have statues in almost every area of the fucking country. So Athena's so gonna be like, like, hey, Bayo, or... Hey, going the wrong way. my homie, go the other way. <laughs> Like, the, the domain of death is to the north. You're going south. It's like, oh, thank you kindly. I, I, I hate, I hate, I hate you right now. Thank you kindly. What the fuck? This isn't Bioshock Mangler. Oh, you see, that would be would you kindly. Uh, then we'll make, uh, we'll make our way to King Midas. Um, I'm gonna be honest. She's not really gonna have a reason to kill him. Because she could just... Now hang on a minute, that never stopped Kratos. It did, actually. What, does, because... he, not, does he not kill Midas? No, 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 he, he does. I'm saying, like, she doesn't have a reason to kill him. You said that never stopped Kratos. Kratos did have a reason to kill him. Kratos couldn't... Kratos uh, could not cross... Uh, safely cross the uh, the lava chasm. That's why he had to kill Midas. He had to throw his body into the lava... To basically uh, transmutate the lava into gold. Man, if so only Midas's safely... power worked, you know, by touching, and you wouldn't have to throw him in there. Uh, I did, but unfortunately, he uh, he gets baked every time he touches that lava. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, there's not really gonna be this weird like oh, UTE does, with that. Does Bale get turned to gold if Midas touches her? Uh, yes, but Midas is never gonna hit her. Also, she's not even gonna interact with him. Are, are you suggesting she'll just fly over the chasm of lava? Yeah, I'm suggesting that she'll just jump. 
over the chasm of lava. <laughs> Mangler, the more Jeez. we're talking about this, the you, more... You, this... you do understand, there's literally a scene in Vigrid where there's a lava plume, and she shoots enough bullets to blow the lava out of the way. <laughs> she can just shoot the lava away with a sheer amount of bullets. I know that sounds stupid, but she already did it. And that was when she was vastly weaker. Mangler, <laughs> it almost sounds like to me, like you're saying Kratos can't jump. Listen, I'm not the one who made the game or the way that the sections of the game work. Seems a little suspicious, Mangler. Yeah, who knows? All I do is downplay. <laughs> Don't play the games or anything. It's not like you have any source material to call upon. Oh, no. Uh, then we're back to Atlantis. How the fuck do we get back to fucking Atlantis? Because, um... Oh, that's right, because... There's a ship nearby which has him set sail for Atlantis. Again? Which is on the way to the Domain of Death. Why? Yes. Why are we going back? We were already there, Bangler. I don't know, but Poseidon's got to be pissed off something fierce. Because, <laughs> you know, he just needs a reason This to game angry. just sounds like a massive fucking fever dream. Um... I'm trying to remember, so when he gets to the nexus of Atlantis, he's probably not... Oh, she probably wouldn't have to deal with any of this, because she could just, like, skip the area and just fly there. Um... Gonna fight a bunch of enemies. And then she'll arrive... Eventually at the Domain of Death. We now finally get into the actual reason we're all here. Holy shit, we, we managed to clear five walkthrough missions in an instant. Impressive. Um, yeah, so... This area honestly just has like a bunch of basic enemies. There's nothing crazy, it's just a bunch of hoplites. Which are just like essentially undead soldiers and whatnot. Not anything too crazy. Be jumping from area to area. That and like cursed remains. There's nothing barrels and handled at this point. Um, and then I guess she'll make contact with Deimos, which I mean, I mean, at this point, um, she'll be there to ask him questions, and he'll just, uh, I don't know, just be happy to be freed. You mean he'll just I be guess? like, oh yeah, let me answer your questions while I've been stuck here for years. And don't know anything about the outside world, but let me help you out. And uh, unlike Kratos' situation, she would uh, he would not be inclined to try and uh, beat uh, Bayonetta black and blue because he is just, you know, he doesn't know who she is. And uh, he specifically had a problem with uh, Kratos because he thought Kratos was responsible for the reason he got dragged away. I mean, he kind of was. He wasn't there to get kidnapped himself. Uh, so Thanatos is probably going to show up, steal Deimos, and then Bayonetta's going to be like, hey, well, listen, I, I need him for part of my investigation. And so she'll just chase him into the suicide bluffs. And then, uh, well, after that point, just, uh, battle with Th Thema uh, Thanatos enter, uh, ensues. I'm going to be honest, Thanatos doesn't really have any powers that are of significance. Uh, uh, mangler, 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 now hang on a minute, hang on a minute, what about his death manipulation? What death manipulation? Ma Ma mangler, he's he's the god of death. Yup. Mangler. And tell me one ability that he can do. That involves touching people and causing them to die. He killed Deimos after barely touching him? Yes, after fighting a full battle with the man and having... Well, actually, no, that's not even true. He just... He literally, he literally grabbed him and jumped off the ledge with him. And Deimos didn't die at any point during their interaction or during a clash on the ledge after the fact. Or during the entire battle. Mangler... Yeah. Mangler, please. We're talking about a series where wi where women have death manipulate when Aphrodite's daughters have death manipulation. Come on, Mangler. <laughs> Mangler, please. Because I, I realize I, I forgot that uh you know having sex with someone too much just kills them. You know. 
That's the real death manipulation. Mangler, please. He's dead. Give um, me something. He has, like, a couple energy wave attacks. Oh, my goodness. Just stop. And, like, he can spin his swords around. Uh, you, you, could you say with a little more enthusiasm? Okay, so he can, he can technically still use the void the way his daughter can. But and how can she use it? Uh, she shoots out a projectile that's like super bright into the middle of the stage and it like, you know, sucks you near it. But I don't know if that'll matter. If This is the most point. disappointing thing I've ever heard. It's really bright and it's very telegraphed, so Bale will probably see it coming from a mile away. And after having killed his her daughter, he'll she'll probably assume they have similar abilities. And when he activates it, you'll be like, "Oh, I know how to counter that. I've seen that before." She also has portal hopping, so she can just portal hop away from it, uh, or jump into purgatory, or do anything. Um, yeah, and then. Uh, I guess due to her uh, her ease and access of abilities, she'll be able to kill Thanatos pretty easily. Because uh, most of the gods don't have any sort of like immortalities or regeneration capabilities that you know prevent them from dying to like you know, standard attacks. Plus, uh, she's got bazillions. She has Chernabog. So, I mean, if he's very unlucky Thanatos is going to be sent to Inferno for the rest of existence where he's going to be tortured by demons and banned out as hell. Uh, that, um, that, got, that got real dark real fucking quick. Well, that that's what happens when you get attacked by Chernobog. You get BFR to Inferno to be tortured by demons for the rest of eternity. It's not really uh, fun. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to be honest. The, oh, wait, this is also the only game where there aren't any sirens. Which is, like, the only thing that could actually hurt her. But she also kind of knows the counterplay to that now. After God of War 1. So. Yeah, um. Deimos is probably not gonna die here. <laughs> so, uh, I guess he'll just go off and do his own thing. Uh, Deimos just lives a happy life. They'll conclude the investigation was, uh, I guess, uh. I guess done, and uh, Bale will be elected to the position of God of War. I guess the the new goddess of war. <laughs> so, um, of all the games, this I, is the one that was really like just out there. Then is what you're telling me. Extremely contrived. Like all the other ones are fine because it's like you're sent on a quest to do this, and it's like this is technically the only God of War game. Aside from, like, obviously, like, 2 and 3, like, the only one when you're under Olympus's, like, servitude, where you're not being sent by Olympus to do the thing you do. Like, they're just happy that you're you're moving free from, like, your mortal ties, that, you're like, your family is gone so that you can join the ranks on Olympus. But they didn't send you to do this. So it makes less. It makes very little sense for Kratos to even be out there in the field. It makes even less sense for Bayo to be out there in the field in his position. <laughs> I see. So yeah, that, that's just it. Uh, like, that was like there's the this seemed this seemed incredibly anticlimactic with the final boss. I was kind of expecting death to have death manipulation. No. Would that have made a difference? No. Why are you lying like, to me? Because canonically she goes into purgatory for all of her fights, so they wouldn't even be able to interact with her. And even then, Witch Time, Bats Within, Moon of Mayakai, Bazillions, Chernabog, Kafka, like, I name a win condition and she has it. I name every win condition you need to beat them and she has all of them. It's like, that's that's without any of the resistances that Kratos has. Which Kratos should be able what to resist What resistances? Most. I was going to say, like, Kratos should be able to resist any of the effects of, like, the void manipulation or things of the, uh, or if you think it's just spatial manipulation of the uh, Scourge of Enix, or, Enix, or the, uh, the powers of Thanatos. So if we give those to Bayo, then she just, she's like, oh, I have my win cons and I invalidate all your powers. That seems a little absurd, Mangler. 
This matchup doesn't seem very fair. It never was. Well, that was, um... That was fucking lame. Yes. So, I- ideally then next time we'll have a much better round. A much more interesting scenario. The, the, this this was the this was the filler episode. <laughs> I really thought it wasn't going to be, but yeah, things are gonna get uh, very spicy when we get to God of War two. Uh, also, just uh, just in a, just like I guess before the questions are asked, since we're getting kind of close to the end of Bayonetta's journey through God of War and Kratos' journey through DMC, uh, there are no plans to use these characters in their series afterwards anytime soon. This will be the season one of uh, Protect Clubs. <laughs> now, I guess after Dante's done, well, I mean, Bayonetta has only three games. So yeah, I guess after that's done, we'll just we'll just we'll just call it season one and just call it there. Yeah, um, I think the next one we have planned is uh, taking Kratos through DMC four in Dante's position. Actually, I, I was I was going to talk to you about that. Yeah, because uh, Devil was one brought up to me. Since there are technically two protagonists, are we going to like have Dante Kratos meet up? Oh, oh have... yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no 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 Dante. <laughs> but Kratos is going to meet up with Nero on a job from Lady. Oh, trust me, you guys are going to love that episode. It's going to be so fun and make so much sense. I got it all figured out. Well, that's going to be an interesting time for me, no doubt. So, with that, uh, do you have anything else you want to say? Are we good there? No, I think that's all we have. All right. So, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for your time as always. Have a nice day. I'll see you guys on the next streamer video. Take care, everybody.